again and let's ask God for his presence. Just pray for a second and ask God for his presence. His presence to go with you. His presence to go with you. Without his presence, we are nothing. We can do nothing without his presence. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father, we thank you that your presence will give us rest this month. In Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus some praise. And let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready for the word? Okay, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John chapter 14, verse 26. The book of John chapter 14, verse 26. This is a very important month for us because in this month, we are going to really learn a lot about the Holy Spirit. This month, we are going to learn so much about the Holy Spirit because if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, uh, like I said earlier, he will not be able to be a blessing to you. So this month, I really want you to prepare your heart because we're really, really going to learn a lot in the mighty name of Jesus. So turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. I read, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, but the comforter, who, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you how many things? Everything. He will teach you how many things? All, all things. things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a new series that I have titled, Understanding the Person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Understanding Amen. the Person of the Holy Spirit, and this is part one. When we start teaching on the Holy Spirit, or when we start talking about the Holy Spirit, many Christians have a misinterpretation of who the Holy Spirit is. They begin to think, about uh, uh, experiences of the, of the Holy Ghost or experiences of the Holy Spirit. And most of the time, sometimes even some churches have misunderstood and misrepresented the Holy Spirit. We think when we talk about the Holy Spirit, people begin to do spooky things or we have to begin to shake in, in an unnecessary manner or begin to behave in a way and manner that people think that we have the Holy Spirit in us. And also, when we start talking about the Holy Spirit, people begin to do their faces in a very, uh, you know, they clench their faces in a very tight way to say that I feel the Holy Spirit. And also, not only that, uh, you know, people relate the Holy Spirit to feeling. He is not a feeling. Yes, there's a part of it, but we're going to go there at some point. But the Holy Spirit is not a feeling. And also, the Holy Spirit is not a goose pimples. Amen? But the Holy Spirit, above all, he is a person. The Holy Spirit, he is a person. That's why Jesus said, but when the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you. Notice Jesus said, he will teach you. So the Holy Spirit is identified as a person that he's a he. He will teach you how many things? All things. And the Bible says that, and he will bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, the reason why we have to understand the person of the Holy Spirit is because understanding is critical in every relationship. Without understanding, your relationship will not flourish. 
the only way you get to know someone is through understanding. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of First Peter, the book of First Peter chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says the husbands likewise dwell with them, talking about your wives, with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. So basically what the Bible is saying is that husbands must dwell with their wives according to understanding, according to knowledge. We, you must understand her. You must understand her behavior. Same way you understand your wife, you have to also understand the Holy Spirit. Because any relationship without understanding will always lead to friction. Are you following me? Any relationship without understanding will always lead to friction. So the Bible says we must dwell with our wives according to understanding or according to knowledge. The same way if you're going to understand who the Holy Spirit is, you need understanding of this person. That's why Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord shall come upon him, talking about Jesus. He says the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. Now notice one of the spirits that's going to come upon Jesus is the spirit of understanding. The spirit of what? Understanding. The Bible also went forth to say in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, it says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. The moment you have understanding, then your relationship with the Holy Spirit becomes fruitful. Hallelujah. First question we want to begin with is who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. That does not mean that God is three. God is one. God is one. But the Holy Spirit is is the third person of the Godhead. You said, how, pastor? God is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. The Bible says that, Behold, O Israel, the Lord your God, he is one God. God is one. But he, he has divided himself into three, into, let's say, three parts or three functionality to be able to relate with us uh, effectively. Now, from the beginning, remember God is a spirit. Jesus told us in John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship this spirit God must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. Now, because God is a spirit, God, being a spirit being, didn't have feelings. Do you understand? He didn't have feelings. So every time the human being he created sins, this spirit being, God, who doesn't have feelings, kills the human beings. Because he didn't understand why there's so much weakness in the human beings that he has created. So guess what happened? And so every time somebody sins, the ground will open and he'll kill all of them. And as this was going on, now God said, well, I cannot continue like this because if I keep continue killing them, I'll finish all of them. So now Jesus, God have to come in the form of Jesus. Now Jesus is God. We'll not go into that now. But Jesus has to God has to come in the form of Jesus, in the form of man, to be able to understand man. Do you get it? Yeah. Now, let me put it this way. For assuming there's a large sheep, you're a human being, 
and there's a large head of sheep somewhere. There's a, maybe about a million of them. And, and you, the human being, can see that this sheep, something is about to happen to them. They're about to be killed or they're about to die. Guess what you do? And you have compassion for them. If you speak to them, they won't understand you because you are a human being. And they are sheep. They can't understand what you're saying. So guess what you're going to do? You are going to change yourself into becoming a sheep to be able to go to those sheep and tell them they are in danger. Are you getting me? Because a sheep can only talk to sheep. So God in his spirit form couldn't communicate with us. He didn't understand what we're going through. He didn't understand why when it's time to wake up and pray, you are snoring. He didn't understand it. So he was killing the very human beings he made. So now he came, he wanted to understand the human beings he made. So he came in the form of a man, just like you and I. That's why the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all manner of temptations. The temptation you go through, Jesus was also tempted. Remember, he went to a, 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 a house and there was a prostitute who broke an alabaster box and poured it on him and she started using her hair to wipe his feet. Now, Jesus is a human being, praise God. He was 33 years old, praise God. When you are 33, all your actions are on action, praise God. Are you following what I'm saying? So, a lady using her hair to wipe Jesus' feet, do you think Jesus had some feelings going on inside of him or not? No? Oh, I see. I see. What's the shortest scripture in the Bible? And Jesus wept. So, Jesus had emotions, he had feelings. If Jesus wept, if somebody, a woman, uses her hair to wipe his feet, he felt some feelings. Okay, you are super spiritual beings. I know, so okay, all right, okay. So God said, the only way I can understand these people is to become like them. So the moment Jesus came, he understood us, went back to heaven, now he's on the right-hand side of the Father, Anytime you sin and God is about to kill you, Jesus, the Bible says, he's standing on the right hand of the Father, interceding. Amen. So Jesus Amen. tells the Father, ah, I know Peter, I know Peter. I know he worked last night. He's come to church. He's a little bit tired. So if he sleeps a little bit, don't <laughs> kill him. <laughs> Praise God. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm not saying he sleeps in church, praise God. I'm just, you know. So Jesus, Jesus said, Father, don't kill him because I have been there. I understand how it is like. I know what he's going through. So, Father, don't kill him. Don't kill them. That was what happened. So even though God is a spirit, he has to come in the form of man to understand how you think, to understand how you behave, so that his message will be made new unto you on a daily basis. So the Holy Spirit now, after Jesus is gone, the Holy Spirit has to come and do what Jesus was doing here on earth. Now remember, when Jesus was here on earth, he was limited. He was at one place at, at a point. He couldn't go to so many different places at the same time. Are you following what I'm saying now? This is very important. So the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. You said how, Pastor? Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. I read, the Bible says that when he had been baptized, talking about Jesus, Jesus came up Immediately, underline the word Jesus. We see Jesus there. Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw 
the spirit of God. Underline that, the spirit of God. That's not God, but the spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning upon him. The 17, and suddenly a voice from heaven saying, suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, underline that, in whom I am well pleased. So you can see the, tri the trinity there. You can see Jesus, you can see God, and you can see the Holy Spirit. Can you see all three in that scripture? So the Bible says, I read it again, when he had been baptized, talking about Jesus, he came up immediately. So that's Jesus in the flesh from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit. He saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove aligning upon him. Verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. That's the voice of God. That is God there. So you can see the Trinity represented right here. Are you following me? Now, so we are looking at who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as he. Jesus said, he shall speak of me. John chapter 15 verse 26. Jesus said, he shall speak of, of me. John chapter 15 verse 26. Number two, Jesus said, I will send him unto you. Now notice, Jesus is describing the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will send him unto you. John chapter 16 verse 7. Jesus said, he shall glorify me. John chapter 16 verse 14. Jesus said, he shall not speak of himself. John chapter 16 verse 13. So Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as he. So the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. You have to understand him as a person to be able to relate with him better. Quickly, let's go and look at what the nature of the Holy Spirit is. What is the nature of the Holy Spirit? As part of the Trinity of God, the Holy Spirit has a special nature. When we speak of his nature, we mean the basic qualities which describes him. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit, number one, is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit, number one, is omnipresent. This means he is present everywhere. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The devil is not omnipresent. The devil goes to and fro. He cannot be in all places at the same time. The devil is limited. I heard a man of God say something very powerful about the devil that Satan thought he was smart, but pride brought him down. The weak point of Satan is pride. <laughs> Remember five times he said, I will ascend unto heaven. I will be like God. I'll sit on the throne of God. Do you understand? So Satan didn't know how pride got into his heart. So the weakest point of Satan is pride. Satan is not omnipresent. You see, many people have given Satan too much credit. Every little thing that happens, the devil is a liar. Most of the times, it's not the devil. Your shoelace tears, the devil is a liar. No, what has your shoelace got to do with the devil? You wear a dress, going to church, and then it rips off. The devil is a liar. No, your body is telling you you need to lose some weight, man. Praise God. Okay, let me not go there now. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. 
Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10. It said, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. So that means the Holy Spirit is still even in hell. He is there. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Verse 9 says, If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost part of the sea, you are there. Verse 10, Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. And now when I talk about the Holy Spirit being omnipresent, I'm not talking about his omnipresent just outside. His omnipresent even inside your mind. Remember, the Bible says that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And this is why we have to start being sensitive of his presence, knowing that he is with me wherever I am. Whatever thoughts is going through your mind now, the Holy Spirit can see it. Pastor might not be able to see it, but the Holy Spirit can see it. It's very important. Number two, the Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omniscient, meaning this means that he knows all things. I just said that. He knows all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has he entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches how many things? All, all things. things. Do you see? He searches all things. So that means the Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows all things. If he searches all things, that means he knows all things. It says, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So, the Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows what's going through your mind. He knows your tomorrow. That's why every day when you wake up, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Holy Spirit, lead me. He knows all things. The, the questions you have in your mind, the Holy Spirit has the answers to them. If you only genuinely ask him those questions, he will give you the answers. Amen. Number three, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. This means the Holy Spirit is all powerful. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. That means the Holy Spirit is all powerful. Psalm 62 verse 11. It says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard that power belongs to God. Amen. Power belongs to God. That which in your village doesn't have power. Amen. That witch, that wicked wizard in your office doesn't have power. Amen. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. Amen. He is omnipotent. Amen. He is the all-powerful one. He says, what God has spoken once, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. So if you want power, who do you go to? You go to God. You don't go to no, no witch, witch doctor anywhere. You go to who? You go to God. Because all power belongs to him. All power. Jesus puts it this way. Jesus said, don't be scared of those who can destroy your flesh. Don't be scared of them. They have no power over your spirit. Even the devil had no power over the soul of Job. He thought he was all powerful, but he couldn't, he couldn't touch Job's soul or spirit. 
He put a little flesh on him and he thought he had, he had come, he had won. But he didn't know that within that, God was preparing Job for an, an awesome season of restoration. Amen. I don't know what the devil has put on you, but restoration is coming to Amen. you. I said restoration is coming to you Amen. because God is all powerful. He's the all powerful God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says that you shall receive power. You shall receive what? Power. You shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And listen, the power the Bible is talking about is not a broken down power. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Put Romans chapter 8 verse 11 there. And let me show you the power that you have. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit which dwelleth in you. Praise God. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell where? In dwell where? In Which spirit are we talking about? The Holy Spirit. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit dwells in you. That's why your body cannot be dead. Because the same spirit dwells in you. In the same spirit that brought Jesus from the dead after three days. It's not a broken down spirit. It's the same spirit. Come on, say glory to that. It's the same spirit. That same spirit dwells in you. And the Bible says that that same spirit will revitalize your body. It to revitalize your body. So anything that has been dead in your life, when that same spirit dwells in you, that same spirit revives your body, rejuvenates your body, and he gives you life from within. That's why Romans chapter 4, from verse 18 to 21, the Bible says that Abraham did not stagger at the promises of God through unbelief. He did not stagger. He did not walk in unbelief. He did not waver the promises of God. He believed that God's word would come to pass no matter what. Believe God this month. Believe him this month because he is the all powerful. He is the most high God. The Bible says that he rules in the affairs of men. So Abraham did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith? How does faith come? Faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you're going to be strong in faith, you have to hear faith. If you're going to be strong in faith, you have to hear faith. If you don't hear faith, you will be weak in faith. Your faith will be weak. That's why four times in scriptures, the Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. Amen. Hebrews 10, 38, the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk 2, 4, the just shall live by his faith. The just, the just shall live. What do we live by? We live by faith. We don't live by sight. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Glory be to God. So we, we understand that the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead dwells in me. So if that same spirit dwells in me, can cancer come into my body? Can brain tumor come into my body? 
Can, can diabetes come into my body? No. Can light and darkness dwell together? No. no. So the Bible says that Abraham did not consider his own body now dead. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. You see, many Christians don't understand who they are and what they have. The spirit of God is inside of you. The same spirit. The same spirit. The same power. The same ability power. The same dunamis power. The same spirit is in you. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth and release your faith this morning. Amen. Say with me, the same spirit. The same spirit. Say it with boldness. Say the same spirit, the same spirit. is in me. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is in me. The same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit. Same. What does same mean? Same means same. Same means what? Same. Define same. The definition of same is same. <laughs> Praise God. The definition of same is what same. So that means if that same spirit is in me, what Jesus did, I can do. Amen. John chapter 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 14. The Bible says that uh, Jesus said, the works that I did shall you do. But not only that, greater works than these shall you do. Same spirit. Same power. Same joy. I can never be depressed. Same joy. Uh, same glory. Same wisdom. Same knowledge. Where many saw and they said, what manner of man is this that he doeth such mighty works? Same power Amen. is same. Is same. Somebody say it's same. same. Somebody say it's same. same. Oh, I feel the spirit of God. Somebody say same. Same, same power. Same. This year you begin to walk, and you'll be, your 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 shadows will be healing the sick. Same power. Your shadows will be healing the sick. You'll be raising the dead back to life. Glory be to God. One of our members right here, the sister was in coma in Africa. And the doctors had given her a day to leave. And she said, Pastor, they said my sister is going to die within 24 hours or a, few, few, a day or two. And right here, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we send your spirit to revive her body. Amen. 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 I didn't shout. I didn't pray through the phone to put on her ears. Just right here. I said, the Holy Spirit, because in the realm of the spirit, there is no distance. Amen. Amen. Do you know what God told me? After our our five days prayer and fasting, God said to me, the same anointing that's upon the word that is doing exploits, mm. that same anointing will be working on those who are viewing across the globe. Amen. Same anointing. Because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. And that sister that was in coma came back to life. They only gave her two or three days to die. She came back to life. She lived for many years because somebody understood the realms of the spirit. You have given the devil too much power. Some of you are scared to even go to your village. You say, oh, they'll kill me. <laughs> you don't know who you are. Number four. The Holy Spirit is eternal. Amen. Number four, the Holy Spirit is eternal. This means he is everlasting. 
He had no beginning and he will have no ending. <laughs> you want to understand who God is? You, you don't know. <laughs> have you ever had your children ask you, okay, let's not go there. That question is for another day. This means the Holy Spirit is eternal. He's everlasting. He had no beginning and he has no ending. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. The Bible says that how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit, underline that, eternal spirit offered himself without spots to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works and serve the living God eternal spirit. He is eternal. He was there before eternity. He was there before the foundations of the earth. And he will be there after the earth is gone and destroyed. Now let's go and look at the personality of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting something out of this? Let's go and look at the personality of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of the triune nature of God. But the Holy Spirit also has an individual personality. Even though he's part of the Trinity or the triune God, the Holy Spirit also has his individual personality. The Bible reveals that the Holy Spirit, number one, has a mind. The Holy Spirit, number one, has a mind. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. It says, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So notice that it says, now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is. So that means the Holy Spirit has a mind. He has a mind. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a will. He has a will. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11, it says, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing one to each other individually as he wills. So the Holy Spirit has his own will. He has a will. He has a will. The will of the Holy Spirit guides believers by denying permission for certain actions. This is very important. Even though the Holy Spirit has a will, sometimes his will will guide you by denying you certain permissions or certain actions. Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7. Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7. The Bible says that now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. They were forbidden. Now, what was the desire of God? That all men will be saved. Amen. Amen. But at one point, Paul and his team were forbidden from preaching the word in Asia. So, sometimes the Holy Spirit prevents you from doing certain things. How many of you, now this is a good thing they were going to do. But how many of you, uh, at some point, you're going to do something bad? You have planned, you are going, and then you go, you go, you go, you go, and then uh, something happens. And he turns you away, and then you miss your bus, or you miss your train, or you miss your flight, or, and then you, you, you get, he's, he's prevented you from something. He denies you permission. Mm. Verse 7, the Bible says that after they had come to Marcia, they tried to go into Bethany, but the Spirit did not permit them. Mm. 
This is not an evil spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did not permit them to preach the gospel. The will of the Holy Spirit also guides believers by granting permission. Now, let me just go back and make a point on what I have just said. That sometimes the Holy Spirit doesn't grant permission. Don't use that as a recipe for disaster. And knowing very well what you're supposed to do and you start lying on the Holy Spirit, we'll see that shortly. One of the things we must never do is to lie on him. Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira lied on him and they were kaput. Praise God. The will of the Holy Spirit guides believers by granting permission. Also, Acts chapter 16, verse 10. Acts chapter 16, verse 10. The Bible says, that, Now after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, in that same chapter, he, he didn't grant permission, but this time, he's granting permission. So, this is why, you know, you have to know the Holy Spirit. You have to understand the Holy Spirit to be able to walk with him. Because in one minute, the Holy Spirit will say no. In the next minute, the Holy Spirit will say yes. Do, are you getting me? One minute, now remember when, uh, remember, um, um, it was David. David prayed and asked God, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Shall I recover all? And at one point, God said no. God said no, don't go. The next minute, God said yes. Surely you shall pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall recover all. So one minute, the Holy Spirit can say yes. The next minute, the Holy Spirit can say no. You have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to know when he's saying yes and know when he's saying no. Number three, the Holy Spirit speaks. We are looking at his personality now. Number three, the Holy Spirit speaks. He spoke to Philip, Acts chapter 8 verse 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Talking about the Ethiopian eunuch. So the Holy Spirit speaks and he speaks, his, his speaking has not stopped. He's still speaking now. If you are sensitive to his voice, you know when he's speaking. He spoke also to Peter, as chapter 10 verse 19. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, behold, three men are seeking for you. So the Holy Spirit speaks. He spoke to the elders in the city of Antioch. Acts chapter 13 verse 12. Verse 2. The Bible says that as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. And let me tell you that the, the best time of hearing from God is during a time of prayer and fasting. So, if you are dull of hearing his voice, go on a fast journey. Start fasting. And, and sometimes it's good to fast just to hear the voice of God. And remember, I've always said that the most valuable asset of any believer is the voice of God. Amen. Knowing his voice. So, the Holy Spirit is speaking today. He's speaking today. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit called for a five days prayer and fasting for the whole church. I know some of you did not fast. It was for the whole church. I know some of you did not fast. 
I don't pretend you didn't hear me. I know some of you did not fast. While some of us were fasting and praying, some of you were eating. Praise God. So I didn't know what the Holy Spirit really wanted to do. So we fasted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, still praying and trusting to hear. Come the last day, Friday, come the last day, the Holy Spirit around one o'clock just exploded and gave me specific instructions. Dictating it, dictating, lie upon lie. How many of you did dictation at school? <laughs> the Holy Spirit was dictating. I was writing at the speed of life. I said, okay, this is the reason. If we had missed that fast, he wouldn't have spoken. So whilst they fasted and they prayed, the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me, Saul and Barnabas for the work. For the work, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. For the work for which I have called them. And through that, the expansion of the church started. It was through this act of prayer and fasting. So, if you, are, you cannot hear his voice, sharpen your spirit. And the only way you sharpen your spirit is through what? Fasting. Number four, the Holy Spirit loves them for the Holy Spirit loves. It says, Romans chapter 15, verse 30. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers for God, in your prayers to God for me. So the Holy Spirit loves. The Holy Spirit loves. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. And for the love of the spirit. For the love of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit loves. Number five, the Holy Spirit intercedes. The last one. The Holy Spirit intercedes. One of the personality traits of the Holy Spirit is that he is an intercessor. This means he prays to God on behalf of us or others. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 26, the Bible says that likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. So your best intercessor is the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're weak, you don't know what to pray for, just talk to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, intercede on my behalf today. Pray for me today. And who is your best, who, who can be your best intercessor like the Holy Spirit? You are weak? Ask him to pray for you. Ask him to stand in the gap for you. You work all week. Your body is tired. You say, Holy Spirit, please intercede on my behalf. Intercede for me. And he will. You know, there are some people in the church, they say, we are praying with you, but you know they are eating and, and celebrating. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. He prays for you. And let me say this. Don't feel guilty if you cannot pray. Ask him to help you. Because remember, one of his qualifications is he is our helper. That's one of his names. The Holy Spirit is our what? Our helper. And he's here to help you. You see, don't pretend you are strong when you are weak. In your weakness, ask for help. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need your help today. I need your help in this direction. I have issues with, I have issues with anger. I have issues with gossiping. Help me. I have issues with just talking about other people. Holy Spirit, help me. And he'll help you. 
It will help you stop gossiping. I have issues with, with swearing at people. He will help you. Because he's your what? He is your what? Do you need help? Yes. Yeah, so go to the Holy Spirit. Don't pretend you are strong when you are weak. Remember Jacob had an encounter with God. He wrestled with God. And God asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He was lying. That was not his name. God sometimes knows your situation, but he will ask you, what is your name? God knows what you are going through, but he will still ask you, what do you want? Blind Bartimaeus came to Jesus. Jesus knew he was blind. <laughs> and then Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said that I may see. Don't come to God with ambiguity. Don't come to God with presumptions. The Holy Spirit knows you better than you think you know yourself. Jacob was wrestling with God. God asked him, what's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, you're a supplanter, you're a deceiver, you're a liar. From today, your name will no longer be called a liar, a supplanter, a deceiver. Your name shall be called Israel. You see, when you have a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit, he changes your name. He changes your situation. So, we all need help, praise God. Don't pretend, ah, ask for me, I don't need help. You need help. You need help. Those who pretend they don't need help, they are the ones who need more help. So, go to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to intercede for you. Ask him to pray for you. Ask him to take care. Remember, one of, the, one of his, his name is he's an advocate. He's our advocate. He's your lawyer. He advocates on your behalf. He stands in the presence of God and argues your case for you. He stands in the court of law and argues your case for you. You might be the weakest link in that situation, but he will argue your case and you'll become victorious in that situation. So it's time for us to get to know him more, to ask him to show us his ways and to show us his will in Jesus' name. Did you receive it this morning? Let's give Jesus a better praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, if you're here, you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. And you know that you are not born again. You know that if you die today, you'll not make it to heaven. Or not only here, if you're watching online, you know you don't have any personal relationship with Jesus. You know if you die today, you'll not make it to heaven. And you say, Lord, I want to know you. You say, the Holy Spirit will not benefit you if you are not born again. The Holy Spirit cannot help you if you are not born again. He can only help you if you are born again. So you want to ask God to help you, to save you. You haven't given your life to Jesus. You say, you want to ask the Lord to come into your life. He will come into your life. Secondly, you were once born again, but you backslided. You backslided. You went into the world. You did all kinds of things. And you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. If you're one of those people, I want to pray with you. I would like to pray with you. to pray with you. A 
Let's pray this short prayer. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I save you. From today, no turning back. No turning back. Satan, I belong to Jesus. From henceforth, I have decided to follow Jesus. No more turning back. In Jesus' name. Send us an email to saved at solutionchapel.org. Saved at solutionchapel.org. And someone will be happy to get back to you to help you to grow in your walk with God in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Did you receive it this morning? Yes. Are you getting to know more about the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. This month, our discovery is going to be understanding the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, because he's more real to us. He's more real than you think. He's so real. He's so real. And as we together go on this journey, he'll help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, remember, like you heard in the announcement, next week is our, our baby dedication. Uh, Pauline and uh, Eric, uh, baby number three. We are waiting for baby number four. Oh, wow. <laughs> Praise God. This church, minimum you must have is four. Minimum. <laughs> minimum is four. Amen. Amen. So we are waiting for you. Next week is baby dedication. And also remember this week is prophetic encounter. Amen. We start on Wednesday through to Friday. And remember, uh, we will be fasting. Amen. Amen. Now let me say this. There's a different grace and anointing upon the prophetic encounter. Amen. The prophetic encounter is awesome. The first one was so powerful. I want you to make time and be here for the three days. On the Wednesday, we partake of communion up to Friday, and Friday, we are all anointed. Amen. This year, be under the covering of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't walk alone. The devil is seeking whom he may devour. If you walk alone, you are at risk. Every program of the church, be part of it. Amen? Amen? Say, don't say, oh, I have children. How many of you know that I also have children? And I come with my children, and we're all getting blessed. So let's all make an effort and be here this week. The theme for this week's prophetic encounter is supernatural restoration. Amen. And I'm believing God for Amen. some awesome testimonies in that area. By the time you come on Wednesday, your restoration would have begun. Amen. I say your restoration would have begun. Amen. And remember, we don't break our fast till we partake of the communion. Amen. That is if you can. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, you can break your fast at 6 p.m. and then you come to church. We still partake of the communion after the service. Uh, because we, this, I don't know why the Holy Spirit said we have to do this, but I was not surprised of this carnivorous what virus that is going on. What is it? Coronavirus. Co <laughs> what did I say? Carnivorous. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I understand it's in the UK, but minus you. It's the blood. We take cover under the blood of Jesus. Remember the covenant we have God said, when I see the blood, yes. I'll pass over. Amen. So come and let's partake of the communion this week Amen. during the prophetic encounter. Amen. And don't come alone. Amen? Amen? Don't come alone. Do we have flyers? Do we have flyers? 
can we make sure everyone receives two flyer each to invite someone this week. Amen. Amen. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Well, we've come to the end of the service. Let's give Jesus some praise. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Remember, we are fasting from Wednesday. The prayer points will be on the church website, solutionchapel.org, and go to the latest news. Go to where it is written, latest news, and all the prayer points will be there. Let's pray together. Let's fast together. Let's believe God for the supernatural restoration that he is bringing in Jesus' name.